Hi, I'm Dave of Urban Astro, and today we're going to jump into the Legacy Sequencer. Now, when I first started out in Nina, this is where I started out at, is the Legacy Sequencer. The Advanced Sequencer, I went in and I took a look, and I was just downright intimidated by it. Whereas the Legacy Sequencer, at least it had a similar look and feel for me. It was kind of similar to APT. Uh, which I had come from and so the legacy sequencer was very easy for me to pick up and to work with. So when you click on the sequencer tab which is the main tab here it's the fifth one down when you click on it you're going to come here to this particular page and you notice here that the title up here it says legacy sequencer and there's five buttons here and so basically, if you want to add a new target, that's what this button right here is for. If you want to load a target, let's say that you had set up a sequence and then you saved it out and you want to reload that instead of recreating the wheel, you can just come here and just hit load target and it will load it up for you. Open target set. Uh, if you have a sequence with multiple targets, it's called a target set, and you can save those out too. And you can load this, so you can load a bunch of targets, and it will put them all together into the same sequence for you. Or if you have a planetarium software, you can import the target from a planetarium software. Um, I'm not sure what else you can import it from, but again, I've never used that, so that's something that I'm not 100% sure about. If any of you need me to um, talk about this, I can play with it and figure it out and maybe I'll do a video at a later time about it. And then this is the advanced sequencer and that's where I live right now. I've been doing the advanced sequencer now for a couple of years and so I'm a little rusty on the legacy sequencer. Uh, I've gone through it a couple times today just to kind of refresh my memory. It's been a while since I've been in the Legacy Sequencer, um, but it is what it is, right? So, all right, so let's just open up a blank sequence so we can at least talk about the pieces and parts, and then we'll do what I would do if I was to use the Legacy Sequence, and that is go through the Sky Atlas and the Framing Wizard to load the, um, the target into the Legacy Sequencer. But let's just load a blank sequencer just so that, or a blank sequence so that you can at least see what it looks like. So here's a blank sequence. And you notice that there's a lot on this page because it tries to do a lot. So the first thing that you notice here is that you got two sections up here. One is target, set, start options. And what that basically means is what do you want the what do you want the sequence to do when you first kick it off? You know, here are some basic tasks and do you want me to perform those tasks? And those tasks are things like do you want me to cool the camera? Do you want me to unpark the mount? Are we going to do a meridian flip? Do you want to do a meridian flip or do you want to stop the sequence when we get to the meridian flip and just don't flip? So these are things that are in a collection here called target, set, start options. And then target, set, end options. You've got two options here. You can either warm the camera or and park the mount or you can choose to do neither of those. You can have the mount continue to track which would not be a smart idea, so you probably want to park them out, and you probably want to cool off your camera, unless you're going to do flats, like sky flats or something like that, in which case you may want to leave that on, or leave this off. It really kind of depends on what you're going to do in your imaging session, but that's what these are. So these are tasks that Nina will do before it does the sequence, and then tasks it will do after the sequence. Next, you get this target tab. And this target tab basically has two sections. This first section here is really what I would call your session variables or your session parameters 
for this particular target, whatever that target is. And then this over here is parameter specific to the target, like what the target is and what its coordinates are. So over here you get things like for this target, and again, you can do multiple targets, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but you can say, okay, after I kick this thing off, I want to wait a minute, two minutes. You can put in how many seconds you want to delay start. Um, maybe you need to have something fully boot up or turn itself on before you kick this session off. Uh, and this is where you can tell it to delay. Sequence mode. What this will do is, right down here is your sequence. So whatever is in your sequence, it will do one line after the other. And then when it's at the last line and it's finished that last line, it's done. It's not going to do anything more. It will immediately jump up here to target, set, and options because the session is over. Or you can choose to loop it. And that is if you have a number of session, uh, if you have a number of sequence lines here, it will loop through them and keep looping through them until the loop condition over here, the total number of loops you want to make, has been met. And once that's been met, it will then stop the session and go up here to target, set, and options. Estimated download time, Nina will calculate that for you. But if for some reason you want to put in an estimated download time, because that gets calculated into the estimated finish time, it accounts for how long it takes to download the light frame from the camera. That's what this right here is for. And basically, I let Nina figure that out. But if you know that it takes, you know, 30 seconds to download your frame or five seconds, you could put that in here. But again, I would let Nina figure that out and make the adjustments accordingly. And then you got estimated finish time. That's finish time for your session. Again, you can have multiple targets up here, so you could have. Um, finish time that's greater than your finish time for the target based upon how you got things set up and based upon how you set up your sequence. Over here is target. And again, this just has target name and it has uh, coordinates for your target. But you notice that up over here, there's a set of buttons here. And these buttons are quite, are quite simple. You can add multiple targets. So we can add as many targets as we want. We can save this as a target set. And on that page in the sequencer, there was a button there to load a target set. That's where this comes in handy. So let's say that you've got three or four targets and you want to try different sequences. You can actually create a target set and then be able to create multiple sequences as you see fit. And then this right here will bring us through the, the targets. As you see up there above, it's kind of moving through the targets. And then each target itself, you can reset the target. It resets the progress. Um, right here, we don't really have progress, but if we had a loop up here, you got the progress right here and zero, so you can reset that progress. Um, yeah, reset all the rows. There we go. And what it will do is it will reset all the values, um, the progress values. What Nina does is if I was to save this sequence file out, then when you're running the sequence, it tracks how many times in this loop it has gone through. And if you didn't get through the entire loop, then when you load this file up again, it's going to start where it stopped and finish the rest of it. So you can hit the reset button down there in order to reset it right up here. So, and this of course just deletes the target. So we can delete that target and we can delete this target right there. 
Okay, so the next section here is target options. And this is quite simply, do you want it to salute to the target? Maybe you're already pointed at the target, <coughs> excuse me, in which case you don't need to salute to it. But for most of us, we probably need to salute to the target and we probably want to center the target. And if we have a rotator, um, we can set the rotator to rotate the target. And again, it will, it will use plate solving for all this. And then we can say, yes, I want to start guiding. So if you've already got that stuff set up, if you've already slewed to your target and you're already guiding, then you don't need to turn those particular options on, but they're there for those that are just going to load this, load the sequence up for the first time and you're in a parked position and you just want to be able to have the sequence run. This is getting into the realm of kind of like automation where it kind of automates some of the stuff, but that's part of the ease of Nina is, the, is to have that particular ability without necessarily having to jump right into the advanced sequencer. The advanced sequencer gives you more options and more flexibility and more control. But this works great if you're just starting out, like I say. And then, so that's what that right there does for you. And then the autofocus here, uh, we can set up when we're going to autofocus. So we can autofocus when we first start the sequence. Uh, if we don't have filter offset set up, you can have it uh, start on filter change so you can refocus every filter change. Uh, I usually will do it on HFR. If the HFR increases by 10%, I want to autofocus. But you can set it for temperature. So if the temperature, like the ambient temperature, drops by 5 degrees, maybe every 5 degrees or every 10 degrees you want it to autofocus, you can turn that on here. Or you can focus after a certain number of exposures. Um, let's say 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever that number is or after an elapsed time, like every 30 minutes, you want to autofocus regardless. Uh, so those are the options that you have here in the autofocus. And then we come down here to the actual sequence. So all this stuff here is all like prep work, kind of getting you ready for the actual sequence itself. And to manage the sequence here, you've got a series of buttons down here. So the first button is to add a row and I'm going to set up LRGB so there we go we got LRGB now I can delete a row so let's say I want to delete a row I can do that or I can add a row so you can see I can add and delete rows to my heart's content this right here will reset the progress of the selected rows again this has to do once you actually start executing, you save that template file out, you call the template file back in the next night, you want to reset everything so everything starts over um, from new, then you would just click on that button and it just kind of resets everything for you. This right here enables you to move rows up and down. And you'll see that here in just a minute. So for instance, if I go here, I say, okay, I want this to be L, and then I want this to be R, G, B. So there we go. Ah, come on. Sorry, I figured that one. Okay, so there we go. So let's say that you want to do L last then you can demote L and make that the last filter run. Or let's say we want it to be the second filter or if we want it to be the top filter. So that's what these buttons here do is they move the order of the sequence for you. This button, consider it like a save as. We haven't save this file yet and so this becomes a save as button once we save this file then this button here will become clickable and that's the save button so if i go in and i make changes to this after i've done a save as then instead of hitting save as again and having to 
click on the same file name I can just click that button and it just saves it out and then finally this right here will load a sequence file so if I this is very much like the button on the front page where if you have an existing sequence file you can just load it well you can do that from here too you can just go to blank sequence and then just say okay I'm going to load a sequence file and it will load it so for instance I've got one set up M45 and you'll see what it does it adds it to my sequence so here's my the page that we just set up and then here's the additional sequence and so now this becomes a target set and I could save this thing out as a target set and then on that front page I can then load it as a target set anyways you get options you get options so let's go ahead and delete this because we don't need this and then here and we won't touch this button for right now but this will actually take the sequence and port it over into the advanced sequencer so if you want to like set up a kind of a basic sequence and then start playing with the advanced sequencer then you can hit that button right there and it will move this from the legacy sequencer into the advanced sequencer with the appropriate uh, triggers and containers in the advanced sequencer and then you can add more um, more pieces and parts if you will to your sequence beyond what's exposed for you here and then this button here will actually run the sequence and once you click on that it will actually kick off and it will actually go through it will start cooling the camera or unpack the mount it will set itself up to do a meridian flip and then it will slew to this target which right now we don't have one but if we had a target there it would slew to it um, and it would kick it off and it would center and then it would rotate because I got a rotator hooked up then it would start guiding and run through an autofocus and then it would run through this and then once this sequence is done right now it's set up just to loop one time through um, then it will come over here and it will not warm the camera but it will definitely go park them out so now let's go ahead and pick a target and let's see how this thing actually works so I'm gonna click um, I'm gonna get rid of target here and what that's gonna do is that's gonna boot us out so now we got a blank slate so let's go up here to the sky atlas and let's say that I've already got M45 so let's go M I don't know M42 let's go to M42 there we go the great Orion Nebula set that for a framing wizard and it's loading up here and again the last video I did I went over the sky atlas and the framing wizard so if you watch that video and have played with this since this should be somewhat familiar and there we are so there's the Orion Nebula and I'm gonna rotate that guy I like that right there and you notice that we can determine the rotation from from the camera if it was dark out and I was under dark skies I would do that so I can see where my camera where it's wrote what its rotation is currently as it sees the sky through the through the telescope but in this case here I'm just gonna leave that button alone I could slew and center like I said before you notice that in the legacy sequencer you could turn these things off or turn them on so if I slew and center from here then I don't need to do that in the legacy sequencer but in this particular case for demonstration purposes I'm not gonna to touch that because again I've got nothing to slew and center to and then we got add target to sequence and if you click on this you have a drop down and what the first one is the legacy sequencer the next one is it's calling it the sequencer but it's really the advanced sequencer and I've got all these multiple different templates that I've created um, that I've got set and stored and ready to go and I could save this target to one of these 
particular templates, but in this case, I'm going to save it out to the legacy sequencer. And there we are. So here we are as M42. And cool camera, unpark the mount, Meridian flip. Uh, not going to warm the camera. I'm going to park the mount. Here's M42. And we need to set up a sequence. Let's see what target options we got here. So I, I want it to slew, I want it to center, I want it to rotate, and I want to start guiding once we get there. And then autofocus, I'm going to autofocus on start. I have filter offset, so I don't need to do it on filter change, but I will do it for HFR and 10% is usually what I it's usually what I go for. I'm going to do uh, this is LRGB, so I can go here and I can click. So I'm going to do add three more here. There we go. And I'm going to do, um, let's do 60 seconds. 60, 60, 60. And my filter here in this case is going to be L, R, G, B. Okay. And I'm going to have it dither. And I'm going to dither every three. Three. I'm leaving the camera gain and offset defaults as they are. And 60 second, um, I'm going to do this for a total of six and six. So basically, I'll do two dither sets each time around, be six minutes. Uh, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say I'm going to loop and I want there to be six loops and you see that even with this we're only looking at 24 minutes so let me go ahead and do um, let me do 20 loops so that would be an hour and 20 minutes of imaging so there we go there's my imaging session and I can save this thing out. I can come down here and click save as and I can save that as M42 and I can click save and now I have M42 saved. So if I'm only going to be shooting M42 for an hour and 20 minutes, maybe I want to shoot the Pleiades M45. So I can come up over here. Where do I do this at? Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's M45. So we just added M45. And so here's M42, and here is M45. And you see that they really are different sequences. And now we see that the estimated finish time for the whole entire imaging session is going to be 4 hours and 40 minutes but for M45 it's going to be 3 hours and 20 minutes and for, oops uh, no clicked on the wrong thing boom on M42 we're only shooting for 1 hour and 20 minutes but the whole entire imaging session will actually be 40 hours and 40 minutes okay that's the legacy sequencer and that's pretty much it and then again if I want to run this thing all I have to do is click this button down here to start the sequence so anyways if you have any questions or comments I'm sure that I butchered this and I could have done a better job at it but it is what it is and uh, if you have any questions feel free to put them down below I'll do the best that I can to answer them uh, and until next time uh, clear skies and happy guiding.